Hey folks, Real Honesty with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin, and this is a show idea that was suggested to me by at WWBFan1981, <clears throat> Ashley. Um, is her name. She's an awesome girl, great girl, lives over on the other side of the country. Wish she was here because I think her and I could have some great times watching wrestling and just being overall, you know, just being good people. She's really, really good people. One of the few on Twitter that I could call a true friend, and that's no disrespect to anybody that I know on Twitter and have known for the longest time. But she's just somebody I really feel a connection to. She's awesome. So anyway, <clears throat> this is my top 15 best women's champions of all time. This goes across other companies. Um, this goes mainly WWE and TNA. WCW didn't really have much of a women's division. Uh, the AWA really didn't. <clears throat> um, I mean, yeah, there's Shimmer, but uh, no offense. I'm not going to include Shimmer. I'm just not going to. I'm sorry. I'm probably not going to include a lot of Japanese uh, women's wrestlers that are just strictly over in Japan because I haven't been able to watch enough of it to make an informed opinion. So this is mainly my top 15 best women's champions in WWE and TNA. Or Impact Wrestling as it is now. How about that? <clears throat> Number 15, Paige. Paige's reign as NXT Women's Champion, I believe the inaugural Women's Champion, um, was very good, and her match against Emma at NXT Arrival was also very good. The reason she ranks lower here, though, and she was the longest reigning Women's Champion until Asuka beat her record about a month and a half ago, actually about two months ago, the reason she ranks lower here, even though she's still a good wrestler, is her runs as women's champion on the main roster, Divas champion, whatever, were not all that great. But still, Paige gets here on the list. Number 14, Michelle McCool. While I personally loathe Michelle McCool, like, as a wrestler, I just never found her that interesting. She's certainly not a bad wrestler, but I just... I didn't care for her character. I never thought she was as good as people said she was. That being said, she really did have a long run as women's champion. And was very, very good. You know, she, she did a lot and she worked hard. I will give her credit for that. Whether I personally care for her or not, she's here at number 14 because of that, because of her hard work. And hopefully, and I'm not, I haven't really heard much of a health update, but the last time I heard anything about her and people tagged me in was that she was battling possible skin cancer. Hopefully that is not the case. Hopefully she doesn't have it. Or if she does, hopefully she beats it. So the prayers and thoughts are to Michelle McCool. Not that she's going to watch this, but to anybody that's a fan of Michelle McCool, um, <clears throat> maybe one of you could update me in the comments about that, about whether she's uh, still battling that or not. Anyway, so number 13, AJ Lee. Poor AJ Lee. I mean, she, she deserved better than she got. She should still be with the company if it hadn't been for WWE and her now husband, CM Punk, being, you know, at war with each other. <clears throat> AJ Lee was, at one time, the longest reigning Divas champion in history. She deserved better from her reign. Because she had a lot, she was a good wrestler. She wasn't great. I want to say that right now. I'm not going to be an AJ Lee stan or a crazy sheep fan here. But AJ Lee was very good and did a lot for women's wrestling at that point, at a time when women's wrestling really wasn't seen as all that great. It was unfortunate that AJ Lee left <clears throat> when she did, right when women's wrestling, especially in NXT, was doing well. Because imagine if she had been able to stick around till even the summer or fall. She could have some good matches with Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Sasha. That would have been great, but nope, we can't have nice things. Still, she's here at number 13. Number 12, Asuka. The reason Asuka ranks lower, is I, it, lower than maybe people would think, she was great in Japan as Kana. She's been great in NXT as Asuka. She had great matches with Bayley. So-so match with Nia. It's hard to have a good match with Nia. <clears throat> um... She had a good match with Dana Brooke before she became a champion. That was back at NXT TakeOver Respect, I believe. Um, and she's had good matches otherwise. I mean, like the four-way at NXT TakeOver San Antonio was fun. And her match at TakeOver Toronto with Mickey James, returning Mickey James, was also very good. Ended abruptly, but it was good. The problem is, is the women's division has been kind of gutted and Asuka has delivered good performances, but she's only working... She can only help help the people she works with so much. <clears throat> and with the exception of maybe Mickey James and one other, a lot of the workers have really been just so-so. But still, she's really done a lot for the women's division. And I'm just going to say this much on the recent NXT TV thing. 
NXT episode when they did a video package for her, showed her in a sundress. Sweet bleeding Jesus, she looked great. Um, number eleven, Bailey. Bailey ranks a little higher because Bailey's build of Bailey's build. That's that's odd to say. <clears throat> of not being able to win the title, not being able to win the title, not being and so, and so close, and then finally winning it at uh, NXT Takeover Brooklyn against Sasha. Sasha Banks in one of the best best matches, um, best women's matches of the last, I would say ever, at least in WWE, WCW. You know, that kind of stuff, bigger companies. Japan's obviously delivered some great women's uh, matches, also a few that I have seen. But this was of big, big companies like WWE especially. I mean, this was the women's match, the type of women's match we always wanted to see. And Bailey and Sasha delivered a great performance. Delivered a great performance at NXT TakeOver Respect. Bailey did a great job as champion. Um... <sighs> It's just, the problem is, is now her main roster run as champion. I don't know. It just, it just kind of. Bleh. I mean, it's it just because it came too soon. It should have come in Mania. But that being said, whatever. Um, <clears throat> Bailey still ranks here because of the hard work she's had, and just she's she's not the greatest wrestler ever, but she's so damn likable, and just has that magnetism where you want to see more of her. Um, Adam, do not take that as a dirty comment, even though I know you're going to. Um, and Shrewmeister, if you watch this, do not take that as a dirty comment. That was not meant to be, though it's kind of a dirty comment. But Bailey's ranked here at number 11 simply because she has worked so hard and fought so long. And in the end, it doesn't even matter. Sorry, Linkin Park reference. Good job on Bailey, though. Number 10, Charlotte. While I'm not a huge fan of Charlotte, I credit her for being a great heel, making her, um, <clears throat> making it easy to hate her. My only issue with Charlotte is I'm afraid she's going to snap her leg doing a moonsault or she's going to snap both. And I don't want to see her do that. She's crisp in the ring. She's good. She's certainly gotten a lot better. Her time in NXT was great when she was a champion. Her time with the championship in WWE was fine. And then after they ended it, after her holding it for nearly a year, her and Sasha hot potatoed it back and forth and then Bailey won it. And then just, I don't know. It's like her initial first main roster run with the championship was great. And then they kind of botched that whole thing otherwise. But Charlotte has worked hard, and I will give her credit for that. That's why she's number 10. Number 9, Medusa. Medusa, even though she faced a lot of talents, besides, besides Bull Nakano on the main, you know, on, on you know early 90s WWE programming, she didn't face a lot of women that were really all that good, <clears throat> or at least all that well-known. She just faced Lilani Kai at WrestleMania 10 in a... I mean, not a great match, but it was a little underrated. It was underrated in the sense that at least they got a women's match on Mania. In fact, that was the first one, I think, since Mania 2 or 3. So they didn't have one for, yeah, I think Mania 2 or 3. I know they had one on Mania 1. I think Mania 2, they had another one. And I don't know they had one on 3. I can't recall that right now. That card's a little muddy to me. At least a couple matches. But that was the first ma women's match I had on a Mania card in a number of years, and it was fun. It was nice to see Medusa get her chance. And she was a hard worker, and it's really nice to see her in the Hall of Fame. So there we go. Number um, eight, Sasha. Her NXT women's run is why she's on here. She was just such a great heel. Her time with the championship in WWE, on the main roster at least, <clears throat> her initial win was great. Her second win, okay. And then by the third, you're like, all right, enough. Sasha's going to have to turn heel on Bailey afterwards, and then we'll get that feud heading into SummerSlam. And then they'll rush it, and they'll end it a payback, because we can't have nice things. But Sasha, for her NXT run, certainly gets on here. Number seven, Lita, multi-time women's champion. Her and Trish had some great matches. Lita was a hard worker, despite her neck injury. It's a shame that robbed us of a couple prime years of her wrestling. Thankfully, she got out of wrestling when she did. She makes a few spot appearances here and there. <clears throat> and that's fine. I mean, she can do what she wants, her life. But Lita did a lot for women's wrestling and was a good women's champion for the short times that she had. And her beating Stephanie, when Stephanie had the women's championship, you know, and was a champion and defended it, um, she got a, she, you know, Lita got a huge pop from there and it was great. It's good. And she had some good matches after that. Number six, she's Tara here, but Victoria. Why Victoria? Because Victoria is vastly vastly underrated as a talent. She had Reigns as TNA Knockouts Champion. She had Reigns as WWE Women's Champion. Her matches with Trish Strass from the Survivor Series 2002 to the Chicago Street Fight in 03 were great. 
Victoria is a spectacular worker, really deserved better, um, had a good run in TNA initially and then was made to be arm candy, which is sad because even at, I think, 40, 41 when she left the company, I could be wrong, but I know she was near 40 at least, she still could deliver quality performances and deserve better. But um, first off, I mean, I think, I think, absolutely beautiful woman, hard worker, deserve, deserves being in the Hall of Fame. Put her in next year, in my opinion. Um, she deserves it. I would put her in over Beth Phoenix, who, oh, here's Beth Phoenix at number five. Beth Phoenix, I really like. I think Beth Phoenix is great. Great talent, great women's champion. Uh, carried Kelly Kelly to some good matches, which is hard to do, and Kelly Kelly will make an appearance on another list as a wrestler, and I don't hate her as a person. Beth Phoenix, though, I love. Beautiful woman. Her and Edge seem really happy together. Multi-time uh, reigns as, as a women's champion. And she did also, um, she had some great matches with Melina. Including the Royal Rumble 09. And I think, I think uh, Extreme Rules 2009. But I know the Royal Rumble 09. They had some, they had some really good matches. And Beth was a really good wrestler. She got out of the business when she um, <clears throat> felt it was time. And good for her. She's happy with Edge. Number four, Gail Kim. This is where the TNA stuff comes in. It will impact wrestling. Gail Kim, inaugural knockouts women's champion. Never got her just due in WWE in her first run. Even though she was made women's champion, it was too soon. She wasn't used right. And then she went to TNA. Really put that division on the map. Along with a lot of women like Roxy Laveau, um, Awesome Kong, and cool people. Gail Kim is an awesome, awesome wrestler. I've, I've never said that Gail can't wrestle. Personally, I mean, it's like I'm glad she actually stayed in TNA. I'm sad she couldn't make bigger money in WWE <clears throat> because they didn't know what to do with her, and I find that stupid. To me, if she's not going to be part of TNA very long, WWE should make overtures to her, swoop her in, have her wrestle in NXT for a bit, have her wrestle on the main roster, and hang up her boots soon, maybe by next year. Or 2019. I don't know how long Gail's going to wrestle. But WWE should give her a good send-off <clears throat> for what she's done with women's wrestling. She can be credited with a lot of women, you know, like Mickey James coming back to WWE. I mean, I'm saying that because Mickey and Gail um, really did a lot for women's wrestling in, <clears throat> in TNA, Impact Wrestling. But Gail really vastly underrated and often forgotten about that sad. That's why she's number four. Mickey James, number three. She beat Trish at WrestleMania 22 for the title. That was great. She's had women's championship reigns after that. She endured the horrible Piggy James angle, which, by the way, fuck you, WWE, for doing that. And I don't blame Michelle McCool or Layla. I'm not going to blame either of them. <clears throat> and I had Layla originally on this list, and I thought, nah, you know, I'm just going to take her. Even though I love Layla. But <clears throat> Mickey put up with a lot. Wrestled really hard and wrestled really wrestled really hard in WWE. Wrestled really hard in uh, Impact Wrestling. In the whole stupid train incident thing that they did with James Storm, that was stupid. Then um, Mickey worked hard, it was good, and she came back to WWE and is doing well now, working with Alexa. Cool stuff. Number two, Fabulous Moolah. Why not? I mean, I know that she had the women's title for a long time when 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 it wasn't really defended a lot. It was an attraction. And maybe her title reign was a bit of a joke. Like, you know, maybe the goal or maybe the record was stretched a little bit. But still, she did a lot for women's wrestling. She was tough. She, of course, you know, wanted to remain on top even in her 50s. And that was the mindset of some talents then. But Fabulous Moolah, Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young, I mean, I may only, almost put them here. Put them both here. But, I mean, Mae, not necessarily because I don't think she was a women's champion much in WWE if at all, and except for being kind of a, you know, at the end of her career, when she was just used as a sideshow act. R.I.P. Mae Young and Moolah, by the way, because they were both great for women's wrestling. Moolah, unfortunately, kind of maybe seen as a bit of a joke by younger fans, you know, because they saw her in the Attitude Era getting a guitar broken over her head. Sadly, Moolah, though, is a great women's wrestler, was a great women's wrestler, and that was one of the pioneers of it. So, good for her. <clears throat> Number one, Trish Stratus. Obvious. Come on. Obvious is obvious. From winning the title at Survivor Series 2001 to fighting with Jazz, Victoria, Mickey James, Lita, <clears throat> Christy Hemme. We don't talk about that match because that match with Christy Hemme was shit. Christy Hemme just wasn't ready for it. Let me just say that right now. 
Then again, even if Hemi was ready for it, I don't think it would have worked because the crowd was booing the shit out of Lita. And her retirement match at Unforgiven 06 was fantastic. And her matches, you know, the few matches she took part of after that, it was it was great, great quality. Trish was such a great women's wrestler. Not the greatest ever, but the greatest women's champion here. And that's what I got to say. So those are my 15 great, best women's champions in WWE and TNA. Do you agree, disagree? Like, share, comment, subscribe. Twitter link is in the description. It's been Real Aussie with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin, and I'll see you soon.